Hi everyone, today I thought I will um, finally update you about my St. Petersburg White Knights Pocket Palette which carries 12 colors and I have been back and forth picking and um, picking new colors and taking colors out which I realized that were um, hindering and things like that. So. This is what it looks like at the moment and pretty much the colors that are original from the palette is let's have a look bright blue so it's this color here then over here it would be carmine um, emerald green green and black so that's a total of five colors that is um, um, from the original palette the rest are all um, substitutes or new additions so let's go have a look at the little swatch list that I have done over here so basically um, this is what it looks like as you can see hopefully let me just move it over here it is quite heavy I hope it's in the picture so it's quite heavy on the yellows oranges and reds and that is how I prefer it and you can see that this is predominantly what I use for my watercolors I have no violets for the exception of um, or purples for the exception of blue lake which is um, blue that is exactly in the middle of ultramarine and violet so i have taken out the ultramarine that came in the palette now i will show you a list of the swatches that just one second that i have done of the original colors um, okay let's have a look so here so these were the colors that were in the palette so cadmium lemon cadmium yellow medium yellow ochre cadmium red light carmine ultramarine blue emerald green green amber burnt amber and neutral black so I will quickly tell you that what I have done is I have taken out amber and burnt amber because those colors I don't use I don't like um, using brown if I can avoid it I really do and in the cases where I really have to and I have no choice then I will mix it up and I have a separate video about mixing browns so go and have a look it's basically about mixing a chocolate cake brown color um, which i have done for my pansy um, illustration one a day um, that i have been doing the one a, one a day watercolor floral challenge so have a look there um, the other thing is ultramarine i have taken out because in general i I'm not too keen on ultramarine but I do agree that you need to have um, it for mixing other colors it's very very useful however since I bought blue lake which um, it is let me just put them next to each other hopefully you can see that it's more violet or maybe like that one second um, so hopefully you can see that it's more violet than this one so this is in a way my ultramarine but more of a of a violet ultramarine so I'm much happy with it also the plus point is that the ultramarine was a semi transparent color and the blue lake is transparent I also have a separate video where I talk about transparency this is the swatch list that I have from that video it um you know um transparency something i have learned is uh, helps me a lot in my illustration so i prefer um transparent colors 
especially in the St. Petersburg White Nights. I haven't done that test on my other watercolors. Um, so yeah, so then let's have a look. Carmine I kept because it's a universe, universal beautiful color. Um, now cadmium red light, this if I'm not mistaken, yes, this was an opaque color. So a completely um, non-transparent at all. So I don't like that in watercolors. So I've taken that out. And, and then these two have been a bit of a problem um, for me. So, oops, sorry for the camera shaking. So let me just do this way. So basically what we have here is um, yellow ochre. It's a um, semi-transparent and it's, it doesn't have enough color in there and whatever I have tried to add it to to mix with it seems to have um, made it duller and not interesting looking and I don't know I just I just couldn't you know get used to it and if you watch one of my um, videos for the big um, palette that I have for the St. Petersburg White Nights where I have taken that color from that palette straight away pretty much or well, not straight away but eventually I have taken it out and was one of the first colors I decided to ditch so yeah so I then eventually decided to do the same from this palette although I thought maybe maybe I will start using it since I have been into floral illustration but no really not and then this color uh, which is cadmium yellow medium has really messed it up for me so many times um, um, So it's a opaque as well. So there are two opaques in the pocket palette this one and the cadmium red light and um, Oh gosh, um, I don't know. There is something about this color especially when I put these two together it would just not work for me and um I will quickly remind you of the example that I have shown you before. Let me just find it somewhere. Where was it? Um, where is it? Here. So here is the um, baby cucumber flower right here. And it, it just um, looks very flat. There was no watercolor flow. Um, no spreading, no beautiful little patterns, nothing and um, it happened a few times to me so hence I decided it was time to go and finally cadmium lemon it is a semi-transparent and I decided to substitute it with lemon which is a transparent color so over here, here you have the um, cadmium yellow medium and the cadmium lemon which you can actually see both of them appear to be quite chalky but especially this one this one is very chalky so uh, I actually threw this color out because it was irritating me so much um, along with the um, yellow ochre so this is what um, uh, the palette the original palette looked like just a quick recap right here and this is what it is looking now so um, as you can see very different so um, so yeah so that's what um, I have done and I have also written out the pigments so most of them are single single pigments and uh, with the exception for Scarlet which is PR2 and PR4 and then Carmine PR 170 colon 1 and bright blue pb15 colon 3 does that double as um two pigments let me know in the comment box if you know because i would assume that's um that's two um, pigments right there but i don't know for sure and then the final two is pbk7 and pb15 for paints gray and neutral black PR 187 and PB 15 colon 1. The rest are all beautiful, one single pigmented, pigmented um, colors, and um, they are 
all transparent except for Payne's grey and neutral black, which are semi-transparent. The rest are all um, transparent colors. So um, I have loads of videos where um, I show how I mix purples and etc. etc. So do have a look. I hope this video was useful to you and yeah the last thing I'd like to say actually is as you can see in this palette I have um, put the bright blue and blue lake over here because it's just not fitting in anywhere here and because I am on holiday and eventually I will be traveling back the plan is that I will I bought this um, like a food container and it's quite cute actually and I like it so I'm not sure if it's food or not but maybe it's I don't know for like kids stuff um, but anyway so the plan is that I will take these pans wrap them in some foil and stick them into this container which will prevent the colors from um, getting anything dirty and they won't be damaged in the traveling or during the traveling so that is what I'm going to do and then once I'm back I will try to figure out how to sort out uh, my entire collection whether I will you know substitute some of the other colors in my big palette um, and keep it like that or or just buy a bigger palette that I could um, fit all of this in or maybe like a metal tin which I have seen actually in TK Maxx um, there is sort of like a flat tin that you could just take these colors out and adhere a um, magnet to the bottom and then just stick them into the palette straight away with no um, separation so that way you could fit in a lot into a smallish place so that might be an option as well so that I will figure out when I'm back um, I hope you found this um, video useful and um, thanks for watching. See you soon.